Hey everyone, it's Lyndon here for another fun visual effects training video and this this one's gonna be fun all right because <laughs> we're switching it up a little bit this time it's gonna be a cinema 4d tutorial I'm gonna show you how to render a depth pass and a motion blur pass and a shadow pass and all the different passes in cinema 4d the purpose of rendering a multi pass is so that you can make creative adjustments to your scene after you render from Cinema 4D. But all the, this whole multi-pass stuff seems really confusing, like all these render settings, but at the end of this tutorial, you're gonna be an expert at exactly how to use the multi-pass system in Cinema 4D. Plus, we're gonna cover tons of tricks and techniques that are gonna make you a much more powerful artist and save you a lot of time when you're doing motion graphics and visual effects work, all right? Time, your most precious thing that we are currently wasting because I'm not getting to the tutorial. All right, so let me just show you real quick how to render out a depth pass. All right, so let's go out of our camera view here. And, and so first of all, how do you control like how close uh, is the white and how far away is the black? Like you can see here in a depth pass that the close parts are white and the far away parts are black. So how do you control how close is the white parts and how far away is the black parts? Well, you can easily do this by going to the details tab of the camera and then checking this front blur. And see, it's weird, it's like blur, but it can control other stuff too, like the depth pass. So this is gonna define how close is white and this is gonna define how far away is black. Then after you're done with that, you wanna click your render settings click on multi-pass and you want to choose depth. It's just below the screen here, just choose depth. And then you want to check multi-pass. That's all you gotta do. Let's just go to save here. And whenever I'm using multi-pass rendering, I like to uncheck the save here because it already renders an RGBA pass, which is the same as the regular image. So we don't want to render that out twice. So let's uncheck the regular image. And we just want to choose our output location. Then our format needs to be open EXR. This is the latest industry standard format. You don't want to use no RPF or any crazy stuff like that. Just do open EXR, best quality, everything. Then you can choose 16-bit or 32-bit channel. Either one of these work fine. And then you have the option of doing a multi-layer file. So basically you can combine the regular image with the depth pass and separate them later in the ear compositing software. Like in After Effects, it's the extract tour effect. You can separate the depth pass from the regular image if you make them all in one file. If you have this unchecked, they're just gonna render as two separate files. One of them's gonna be the regular image and the other one's gonna be a depth pass. All right, then just make sure all your output settings are right. Height, width, um, the frame rate, um, from and to, and then there you go. You just click this button here. Then you render out your depth pass. And then you can see here, if we go over here to the layer tab, click on this one, choose single image. There is our depth pass. All right, so if you appreciated me getting to the point and that timely explanation, I would appreciate you leaving a like on this video before you go. Thank you, and for those of you who are really confused about what just happened, and you wanna know more about all the this confusing multi-pass render settings, and how to composite them in After Effects, and how to use all the different multi-pass compositing options, like the reflection, and ambient occlusion, and motion blur. You're gonna become a pro with it if you watch the rest of this video, because we're gonna solve a lot of problems you may encounter, learn a lot of techniques, so real quick, what a multi-pass is, is it's where you can render out different aspects of your scene into separate files. For instance, this one file, this one image sequence right here is the specular path and it renders only the specular. This one right here is the shadow path, it renders only the shadows. And it renders whichever one you have specified right here, like the shadow, ambient occlusion, whichever one you specify. So how do you specify? Well, you just click this multi-pass button and you choose whichever one you wanna render, like diffuse, specular, reflection, etc. If you don't know all the exact ones you have in your comp, what you can do is this cool trick. You hit add all. Boom. That turns on all of the different aspects of your scene, like diffusion, specular, shadow, refraction, all that stuff. Make sure you have multi-pass checked or else it won't render those. And we're just going to delete the ones that we don't need. So I don't want anything to do with atmosphere, no causistics or global illumination. All right, so let's say the only ones we want is like shadow, ambient occlusion, motion blur, depth. So after that, we wanna go over here to the Save tab, and like I said before, we wanna uncheck the regular image because it's already gonna render out what's called like an RGBA pass, 
which is the same thing as the regular image. Let's uncheck that so it won't render out that same sequence twice. And uh, we'll just explain each setting here in more detail. All right, so we want to use the Open EXR. Like I said, this is like the industry standard, best quality format at this time. EXR is our image file, so it's going to render one image for each frame and that's called an Im image sequence, right? And so in our compositing software, like After Effects, we're gonna import that image sequence and it's gonna turn into a video, all right? Each image is gonna be one frame of the video. It's called an image sequence. All right, so at this point, if we stopped and we go ahead and hit the render button, what it would do is it would create a whole bunch of different image sequences, one image sequence for each multi-pass we have enabled, right? Ambient, specular, shadow, all that stuff. It would create a separate image sequence for each of these passes. So before we cover any more of these settings, which these are some really cool settings down here that we're gonna cover, let's go ahead and see what this looks like at this point so you guys don't get lost. So we're gonna choose where we wanna save these multi-pass files and I'm gonna go right here. 3D intro render, I'm gonna create a folder. Go into here, I'm gonna create a new folder, call this multi-pass renders, all right? And call this AVFX intro, go ahead and save this. And then if we hit the render button, it's gonna start rendering out all those different passes. So we go over here to layer, you can see specular, shadow, all those different passes. So you can see here in multi-pass renders, we only rendered one frame. That's why there's only one frame for the ambient occlusion, one frame for the et cetera, et cetera. So it renders out all those different passes and we can import these directly into After Effects. So now I'm about to show y'all something crazy in these render settings. What Cinema 4D can do is automatically create an After Effects file or an After Effects composition that imports all of these passes automatically and puts those passes on the right blending mode. Because like, for instance, the shadow needs to be on the multiply blending mode. Well, if you check save and render the sequence out, what it's gonna do is automatically create an After Effects file that automatically imports all of your different passes and puts them on the right blending mode. That is an awesome feature. And this, I haven't even mentioned the best part about this feature. What this feature also does is it transfers all of your lights, cameras, and null objects to Adobe After Effects. Let me show you. So I'm gonna manually save it. I'm gonna click Save Project File, click Save. Then let's launch After Effects and import that file we just created from Cinema 4D. So we wanna navigate to File, Import, Import File. And you can see the file here. It's a .aec file, stands for After Effects Composition. And we wanna import that. Boom, you can see two folders here. And what we wanna do is find this composition. Let's go ahead and open that. And you can see there is our camera. Those are our lights in real 3D space inside After Effects. So this camera right here is in the same 3D position as this camera right here in Cinema 4D. <laughs> That's awesome. And you can see we have all of our multi-pass layers here as well. So we have the specular, the shadow, and the ambient occlusion, which I turned off so it would render faster. But you can see they're also on the right blending mode, multiply. And we have the spatial passes, which is the depth, the motion blur pass, and also, like I said, it automatically renders out the regular image. So you can see we can have control over the specular, shadows, look at that lusciousness. All right. And just a quick note, I really like to render out what's called a diffuse pass because that's basically um, just the regular render without all the special lighting like the specular and the shadow and all that stuff. So that way if we want to turn down the shadow, we, you know, we have the diffuse pass at the bottom and we can easily just kind of control the opacity of the shadow because if we turn the shadow all the way down, it's all the way gone. So, so the diffuse pass is basically like the regular image without all the advanced lighting. So I like to render the, the diffuse pass with all the advanced lighting as separate passes. All right, so now it's time. We're, at, we're actually at the best part of this whole freaking tutorial. I should have explained this sooner because of how awesome it is. But I'm going to introduce you guys to what's called an ID pass, all right? <laughs> ID passes, they're insane, all right? It's going to blow your mind. Kind of like how this ball explodes. Well, that's basically going to be your brain, all right? Okay, so an ID pass can basically create a mat of any 3D object in your Cinema 4D scene. I could go in After Effects and create a mask and draw around each one of these rocks frame by frame. That's not a very good idea. Or I could create an ID pass in Cinema 4D. So once I render out the ID pass, it looks like this in After Effects, right? It's a mat of the object that I select. So let me show you how to 
render out an ID pass. So you wanna go to the object that you wanna create an ID pass on, and this sphere right here is the broken pieces. You wanna right click and do Cinema 4D tags, and you wanna go over here to compositing. All right, so this thing right here is the compositing tag we just added. Now we wanna click this and go down here to object buffer, and you wanna enable one of these, right? So this is gonna be the buffer one. Once you do that, you have to go to your render settings and go to the multipass right here and turn on object buffer. So the object bu buffer works just like any of the other multipasses we add. Again, the object buffer renders out a mat of the object that we specify. So this object buffer is gonna render the mat for any object that has an ID of one. Like for this object, it has in the object buffer an ID of one, so that means this object buffer is gonna render out the mat for that object. If we change this ID to two, it's not gonna render out the mat for this object because this ID is one. We could, we could also add another object buffer. So we click multi-pass, add another object buffer, and then we could make the group ID three. Now, any of these objects that have the ID three assigned to it, this object buffer is gonna render out. It's gonna be a separate image sequence for every object buffer we add, just like there's gonna be a separate sequence for any of the multi-pass types we have. All right, so in this example, I wanna use my ID pass to darken these rocks, darken just the rocks, nothing else. So I'm gonna use my ID pass right here and just, it's a mat for just the rocks. And uh, this ID pass will be here when you import your .aec file. Remember we talked about rent saving your .aec file that imports all of your passes automatically and that includes your ID pass like this one right here that has a mat for just the rocks. All right, so what we're gonna do is create an adjustment layer. So I like to do a shortcut control alternate Y or command option Y. Let's just apply curves to this adjustment layer and we can darken this down, make it more blue, whatever the heck we want. And then we need to apply this adjustment layer to this ID pass and we do that by using a track mat. So we wanna stick our adjustment layer one layer above, below the ID and use a track mat on the adjustment layer. So let's go over here to this track mat section. If you don't see it, toggle switches till you see track mat right here and change this to luma mat so that this adjustment layer only exists where there are white areas on this mat. All right, and you can see this adjustment layer only applies to the rocks or only applies to the white areas on this mat. So back to Cinema 4D, I want to show you one more thing about these render settings, something pretty awesome. You have the option to create a multi-layer file. And what that's going to do is combine all the different passes into one file. So how do you access like the different passes if they're in like one file? For instance, this is a debris um, element that comes from actionvfx.com. It's made for like destruction, stuff like that. But this is a multi-layer file, which means it contains several hidden passes. So how do we access those passes? Well, in After Effects, you just go to the Extractor effect right here, apply this to your layer, and then you just click on this right here. It's gonna open up a window, and then you just wanna choose the path that you want. For this case, Depth, and then we'll hit OK and we'll apply a few more effects and you can see we now have a depth pass. By the way, if you're wanting to know exactly how to extract all the different passes like the depth pass from an action VFX element, we'll have a link in the description to that. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to use the motion blur, how to use the motion blur pass. Right here, it looks like that. What the freak is going on here? This is a motion blur pass and you have to have a plugin, so by After Effects, there's no way to use motion blur passes. Right? You have to go get Real Smart Motion Blur. It's a plugin. You have to Google it. I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer right here. Call this Motion Blur. And we're going to choose Real Smart Motion Blur Pro Vectors. All right, and we just want to choose our motion blur map right here. Very simple. Boom, and just like that, we now have motion blur from our vector map. And this is a lot faster than using like the pixel motion blur. It's going to render a lot faster, and it's more accurate. Each color represents a direction of motion blur. Cool, and to get rid of these like edges here, what I like to do is actually use a CC composite effect. So CC composite, apply this after the real smart motion blur, and then I just uncheck RGB only and then choose behind. So that way the actual footage composites behind the motion blur so that it fills in that gap. Cool, and that is how you use the motion blur pass.
All right, be sure and subscribe so you won't lose access to all the free visual effects knowledge on this channel. We wanna transform you into an absolute creative ninja that can create whatever your vision is. If you're ever trying to create any action visual effects, the best and fastest way to do that is with stock footage, and the best place to get stock footage is from actionvfx.com. They have industry standard fire, explosion, smoke, dust, destruction, debris, all that. Just go to actionvfx.com. All right, my name's Lyndon. I've had fun. You guys keep crushing it. Until next time, I'll leave you to it.